Oops. Sorry, we're late. It's Dee's fault. <laughs> yes, as usual. <laughs> All right. I will move to retire from executive session. Return. 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 That's what I meant. Second. Mrs. Lawson? Yes. Mrs. Stone? Yes. Mr. Grove? Yes. Uh, if you would, let's see. Yeah, let's do the pledge. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Move to adopt the agenda. Second. Mrs. Lawson? Yes. Mrs. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gersh? Yes. All right. First up, 2023 tax budget, public hearing. Fiscal Officer Ken Dietz. In your packet, you have uh, the documents that we need to send to the county auditor's office, but we have to have them approved before July 20th, 2022, and our Meeting date was uh, a day after that, so we decided to do it in June. Uh, I can make a few comments on uh, the budget. The, the totals of each fund are in there. The, uh, there are several increases. Uh, basically, we're, we're doing a lot of things out of our shift projects that we haven't done before. The, uh, the final total of the tax budget, which you do not have a total on it, but adding up all the funds, it's sixty-one million six hundred and sixteen thousand. That's significantly higher than what we spent last year, but we didn't do a lot of the projects last year that we had planned to do, and it's uh, about eight million higher than our 2022 budget. But as you know, we're doing a lot of things down on Kellogg Avenue. Uh, that's all, those numbers are all included in there. Uh, will we spend them? I don't think we're going to spend all of that money, but that's where the differences are. The, um, the main differences are on the, the riverfront uh, TIF budget, American Rescue Plan. We are, we're expecting to receive money this year, and we're expecting to spend the money. And that's covered in there. So those two projects right there are like close to $5 million. Um, we have, uh, we, we have our five-year plan that we presented at the uh, meeting, at our planning meeting. And those numbers, uh, we're trying to tie into those for 2023, 2024. I guess what I'm trying to say, we're, we're estimating a lot of these expenses, but if we don't put them in the tax budget, and then we want to come back to the county auditor's office uh, sometime before March 31st next year, we're going to look at it and they're going to say, well, why didn't you know that or why didn't you know this? Well, we don't know it, but we're estimating what we think we're going to spend. In the past, it's been a lot easier because we didn't have the CARES thing. We didn't have all these new TIFs that we have now. And we are planning on making a lot of improvements in those areas where we have the new TIFs. So that's uh, it's kind of the explanation of all the different funds that you're looking at if you're looking at the tax budget. We do have a preliminary 2023 detailed budget that we are putting together and we use that to put together the tax budget but that's not complete because we're talking about a budget that we want to have approved in March of, of 2023 and we, we're planning it's very it's very close to what the tax budget is saying but we're planning to make some changes to that so that we can uh, when we adopt the permanent budget next year we're going to be fairly close to what the tax budget is unless we find out some things that they're not going to happen. Okay. So, 
Thanks, Ken. It, it, I, I have the numbers here from the last three years, and they jump all over the place because we were getting different funding, we were making different expenditures, uh, and, and like we were talking about uh, over, the, over the last couple months, these are estimates. And it's June, and we're estimating what we're going to be doing in March of 2023. So, yeah. And that's what we're required to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. This is a public hearing. So, Ken, unless you have any other commentary, I will open the public hearing for any comments. John. Thank you. <laughs> I don't see anybody running up to the front of the room, so I'll close the public hearing. And I know we have a resolution to consider. Uh, any other discussion amongst the board? No, I don't have any comments. Okay. Um, I move to approve and adopt the 2023 tax budget and authorizing its filing with the Hamilton County Budget Commission. Second. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mrs. Stone? Yes. Mr. Girth? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I was going to say no. I, I did. Thanks, Ken. Thank you. I made my point. You did. Public forum. Anyone that would like to address the board on any other matters of the township may do so at this time. John. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Trustee comments. Anything else from the board? It's hot. Stay cool. That's all I got to say. Stay hydrated. It's hot out there. You can come in here if you need air conditioning. This room is, this building is freezing. So just come over here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I come do over here and I, hang uh, out. Oh, sorry, Dee. I have a compliment. Um, the garden tour, it was so lovely. Um, I took the girls and my husband and I, and we just had such a good time. So very well done. It always is. Yeah. It's always a great event. Very good. Garden and history. Mm -hmm. There's definitely some history on the tour. And I would just like to comment that this is not beer. <laughs> red, red solo. Cup. Red solo. Cup. So he says. <laughs> All right, Ken. I think it's back to you. You're up again. Yeah, we uh, we have financial reports in your package. Uh, revenues are just about at the level we expected them to be at this time, but the uh, real estate tax collection just got underway a couple of weeks ago, and we'll starting to receive revenue from that. Uh, we do have something set up with uh, Huntington Bank, our depository, and. Uh, some other investment institutions that we deal with that uh, we're, we're getting some pretty good offers right now. Instead of leaving that money in a depository, we're, we're going to move it around. Uh, you know, we, we never heard of one or two percent uh, in the last two or three years, but we're, we're being presented with that. And, and uh, Jennifer's looking at it, and I'm looking at it, and we're, we're going we're gonna to move some money into areas where they're not in our depository because the depository is not generating the same amount of money. So uh, and we will be getting anywhere from 15 to $20 million in the next uh, month or two. So that's happening. So the, like I said, the, the revenues are where they should be right now. They're going to be higher, of course, in another month or two because we're going to be ahead of the game appropriations of the expenditures that we have um, they're they're low right now because there are projects that we have you know online ready to go and uh, I mean, my hope would be that we we get them completed this year because we're we're getting better pricing on our paving and we put a lot of money into our paving so uh, that would be something we would concentrate on and, and try to get it done before the end of the year so we have no appropriation changes, and I think we do have some minutes to approve. Okay, I move to approve minutes for April 18, 2022. Uh, it's a special meeting, April 21st, 2022. That was a special meeting in April 21st, 2022. 
Do we need to do the one set separate, separate since Lexi? Yeah, okay. I wasn't, yeah. Okay, I move to approve the uh, minutes for April 18th, 2022. Second. No, I'll second. Oh, okay. She has to second, yeah. That's right. Yep. Ms. Lawson? Um, I'll Mr. refrain Stone. from voting. Mrs. Stone? Yes. Mr. Berth? Yes. Okay, then I move to approve minutes for April 21st, 2022, the special meeting and April 21st, 2022. Uh, second. Mrs. Lawson? Yes. Mrs. Stone? Yes. Mr. Berth? Yes. Thanks, Ken. Thank you. Thank you. Margaret, anything from the law office? No report Thank tonight. You. Thanks. Planning and zoning, Paul Drury. Hi, good evening. Uh, the first item on our agenda is the Kellogg Gateway Traffic Study. As you're aware, we're conducting, Kleinger's is um, conducting several areas of study to implement our Kellogg Gateway plan. We just finished up our open house for the interchange improvements, which we had um, very positive feedback from that just now. Another scope is the traffic study. And the traffic and study we feel is probably one of the first studies that has actually been done down in the area. It's a very complex traffic study as it impacts I-275. So we have been coordinating the study with the city of Cincinnati, Hamilton County Engineer's Office and ODOT. Um, the traffic counts were originally a part of our contract with Kleinders to do the traffic counts for the traffic study. But due to its impact on 275, ODOT is requiring a third party engineering firm who is pre-qualified look at traffic projections. So ODOT is recommending the township contract with Lanham Engineering to do the traffic volume projections. And they have submitted a scope um, and a proposal for your consideration. So we have that before you tonight. So. So it was going to be in Kleinger's contract. So is their contract going down by the same amount? So the traffic volume projections was not included in Kleinger's original oh, scope. The traffic counts were, and Kleinger's is still conducting the traffic counts. Um, Kentucky, we are able to use, um, so, so because it impacts the interstate, we have to look at an interchange in both directions. So to the Kentucky side we have to go to 471 and 275 on our side we're going to the 52 uh, for traffic counts and Kleinders is conducting the traffic counts we are getting counts that are already there from Kentucky that fall within the allowable time frame um, ODOT is requiring a third party engineer take those counts and do traffic volume projections for the future so that is what this contract would be. It was not anticipated in our original scope with Kleinger's. So yes, this would be an additional cost above what we're paying Kleinger's um, that was not foreseen in the original scope. But this is required by ODOT? Pretty much, okay. yes. So they don't want to pay for it? No. <laughs> did we ask them? We did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I move to authorize the township administrator to enter into an agreement with Lanham Engineering LLC to provide design traffic services for the Kellogg Gateway Study Project for a cost of $25,375 together with a 10% contingency for a maximum appropriation of $27,912 funded out of Ohio Riverfront to funds. Second. Mrs. Lawson? Yes. Mrs. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerber? Yes. Thank you. And the next item on our agenda, believe it or not, it's already been a year since we received sort of funds for our Elston um, connector to the Little Miami Trail. They are accepting applications for next year's grant, and we are proposing to submit a grant for two crosswalks. The memo said three, but we've scaled that back to two, which is reflected in the resolu resolution for your consideration. But we are proposing to apply for an installation of two crosswalks on Beachmont Avenue. One would be in the vicinity of Beach Acres Park mm -hmm. and the Recplex um, to Mount Washington Care Center. The other um, pedestrian crossing would be back at Vol. And what these would be, they would be um, pedestrian connections, crosswalks 
with a refuge island in the middle. Mm -hmm. So you would be able to get from one side to the other. It applies to the sort of grant as there are bus stops on both sides and it would allow for people riding metro to be able to cross the street safely. It would also help as a traffic calming measure in that particular stretch of Beachmont Avenue where we have had speeding issues and we've also had a couple of accidents. Um, we had approached ODOT to see if they would be willing to let us explore a road diet, so shrinking the roadway, but due to the traffic volume through that area, that was not an option. So this was actually one option suggested by them, ODOT, and they have looked at it, and it would survive, serve as a traffic calming measure because you would have bump outs to allow for the pedestrian crossing, you would have the signal, and then you would also have a refuge island. So we are requesting to apply for the grant, there is um, matching funds that would also be needed. I, I walk around here, all, um, this is close to my house, so yes. I, and I think this is great, but so what about the sidewalk? And, I mean, there's no sidewalks through there. And that is part of our long-term trails plan, but it wouldn't be applicable to this grant. Free money. Well, yeah, I know. I yes, get free but money. we are looking at I mean, doing I, that. You know, it's and, nice to have a crosswalk, but if you don't have a sidewalk to get there, it's a little and there's a couple of options that we're looking at for Beachmont is there's limited right of way through that area and um, so we're looking at the potential of, of doing something like we did in downtown Anderson where you could actually put the sidewalk inside the right of way in the lanes and right, narrow right. the lanes um, we haven't engineered that and we're not to that point yet um, but we are looking at that option um, may there was some lane striping that allowed for on-street parking as well so that would have to be reconfigured as well the shoulder is really big yeah but it's they go fast i won't walk on it believe me i'm close and every time i'm like i'm not walking on that. some of you it, live over there it's like i i won't i refuse to, it's like and i'm a walker and i'm like nope you too fast i would if there were a sidewalk <laughs> um can't you go down burn so this is <laughs> i walk on markley too what the heck if this opportunity is presenting itself right yeah, now. Yeah, okay. No, and I, and and, but I yes, we are keeping that neighborhood yes. across the street, which all mm -hmm. those houses cross over to the rec plec, which is great. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm not against this. I'm just saying, I want the sidewalk too. So, can we ask Sora for the money? Yeah, or ODOT. How about ODOT? We just gave them twenty-five thousand. So. Okay. Are we ready? Are we ready? I, have any any comments? Comments? I don't have any questions or comments. Hmm? I am. <laughs> I want <laughs> people to pay up. <laughs> okay, uh, I moved to adopt the resolution authorizing a grant application to construct two crosswalks with pedestrian refuge islands and so solar powered rectangular rapid flashing beacon signage on Beachmont Avenue near Vole Road in Anderson Rec Plex and committing local matching funds. Second. Mrs. Lawson? Yes. Mrs. Stone? Yes. Mr. Earth? Yes. Thank you. We're going to skip, skip over C, come back to that with PJ. The item D is nuisance abatement for 780 Sutton. This property has been before you before um, for the removal of garbage and debris on the property. We were there doing an inspection. The property is vacant now. Um, you also approved a resolution to secure the structure and we're moving forward with securance. But when we were there getting an estimate for securance, uh, we noticed that the, there is still additional garbage on the property and the grass is starting to grow. So we are requesting a subsequent um, nuisance for the property. It's owned by 555 Church Street LLC located at 780 Sutton Road. Um, I move to determine existence of subsequent nuisance on land owned by 555 Church Street LLC located at 780 Sutton Road in Anderson Township and providing for notice and remediation pursuant to section 505.87C of the Ohio Revised Code. Second. Mrs. Lawson? Yes. Mrs. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gert? Yes. Thank you. PJ has our next item. PJ. Good evening. Hi, PJ. Hi. Uh, so first off, I wanted to thank the board for their support of the tree committee over the past uh, few years and helping us get through uh, this, this Heritage Center Arboretum master plan process. Uh, so back in December 2020, the Heritage Center property was designated as a level one arboretum um, and working through a few different issues and opportunities, uh, staff and the tree committee felt it was important to develop a master plan uh, to protect the future 
of the Heritage Center Arboretum. Uh, so this plan was presented to you at the at the interim meeting um, and contains a few different uh, future projects and we're looking forward to implementing those here soon. Um, but the, the new vision statement for the Heritage Center Arboretum is to celebrate and experience the wonders of nature in the spirit of our ecologically significant environment that enlightens, educates, and enhances our quality of life. Um, so I know the committee is very excited to involve students and ensure that this is an asset for all township residents to enjoy. Uh, so this has been a roughly six month process to get it to this point, um, as it included stakeholders from our tree committee, from our green space committee, our township staff, uh, trustee Lexi Lawson as well, uh, facilities manager, uh, Mark Magna, events coordinator, Jennifer Sanders, green space inspector, Suzanne Klingman, as well as Bob Buck, who is representing uh, the Forest Hill School District. Uh, so there's the plan for your consideration and a resolution for your consideration as well. Um, we do have two of our tree committee members here as well who have been uh, very influential in getting this plan uh, to where we are now. So I'd be happy to answer any questions. I love the vision statement. I know you've already heard that before. Uh, but it just really resonates with the greater goal of, of what this is all about. And I love the educational piece. Um, there's been so much work put into this, just the plan itself. Um, and not just for how it's going to look today or next year, but some flexibility in this plan. Um, there's not too many constraints, but to add that piece in that we want to get more people to really appreciate what a gem that the community has with the Arboretum. Great job. Thank you. How many Arboretums are there in the world? Uh, so 527 as of June that are uh, accredited by ARBnet, and we have one of them here in we Anderson have. Township. Well, it's a big deal. Of the world only right. yeah. I think it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, both of you gentlemen, for all your work on this. And you, PJ. Thank you. I move to adopt a resolution establish a mass, establishing a master plan for the Heritage Center Arboretum. Second. Mrs. Austin? Yes. Mrs. Stone? Yes. Mr. Girth? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, PJ. PJ, oh, wait a minute. You're not getting off that easy. <laughs> is there yes. something else you'd like to tell the board? <laughs> uh, so tomorrow is my last day with Anderson Township, oh. but it's been uh, it's been a great four and a half years, and I wanted to personally thank each and every one of you for making it uh, just a, a great four and a half years. I've had so much fun here. I've learned a ton, um, and I'll always uh, be indebted to Anderson Township for giving me my first job. Thank you. You'll be missed. You will be missed and sad for us, but happy for you. And you'll do amazing on any endeavor you take on. And thank you personally for all that you've done for me as a resident and as a new trustee. So appreciated. Thank you. Go Former Bearcats. Trustee, uh, we'll Andy see him. Yeah, well, you might want to pass a, on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a double edged sword. <laughs> We'll see you at Bearcats games. Yeah. Thank you, PJ. Thank you. Uh, Public Works. Mark Magna. Well, tomorrow is not my last day either. So. Damn. Darn. <laughs> Andrew will give you a recommendation. <laughs> I love Andy. He's a good guy. <laughs> uh, the first item I have is the acceptance of Cold, Cold Stream Drive Block D. The Hamilton County's Engineer's Office has asked the Board of Trustees to accept for maintenance responsibilities the future public roads in Park Place at Cold Stream Phase 1 Block D. The Engineer's Office has received a maintenance surety and maintenance contract from the developer owner. The Board of County Commissioners has accepted the bond, which is good for a year. The Public Works Department reviewed and staff supports the acceptance of this street as a public road and recommends the Board support the Engineer's Office acceptance of the Cold Stream Drive, I'm sorry, excuse me, Cold Stream Club Drive, 530.62 linear feet, which is equivalent to 0 0.10 miles. This will bring the township total maintained road miles to 123.16 miles, the most of any township in Hamilton County. Uh, there's a motion attached for your consideration. I'm, oh, 
I move to support the Hamilton County Engineer's acceptance of Coldstream Club Drive, Block D, which lies in the park place at Coldstream Subdivision as a township roadway. Second. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Garth? Yes. Thank you. The next one is acceptance of Forest Edge Drive, the woods of Forest Hills Phase 2. The engineer's office is asking the Board of Trustees to accept for maintenance responsibilities the future public roads in the woods of Forest Hills, Phase 2. The engineer's office has received a maintenance surety and maintenance contract from the developer owner. The Board of County Commissioners has accepted the bond, which is good for a year. The Public Works Department uh, has reviewed and, and staff supports the acceptance of the street as a public road and recommends the board support the engineer's office acceptance of Forest Edge Drive, 538.21 lineal feet, which is equivalent to 0 0.10 miles. This will bring the total township maintained road miles to 123.26 miles, the most of any township in Hamilton County. There's a motion for your consideration. Where is the woods? At, where is that one? Mm -hmm. Does anybody know? The woods of Forest Hills? Where is it? Oh, oh that's one. Okay. I move to support the Hamden County Engineer's acceptance of Forest Edge Drive Phase 2, which lies in the woods of Forest Hills Subdivision as a township roadway. Second. Mrs. Lawson? Yes. Mrs. Shane? Yes. Mr. Berth? Yes. Thank you. And the last one is the acceptance of Forest Edge, Forest Edge Drive and Stags Run in the woods of Forest Hills Phase 3. The Hamlin County Engineer's Office is asking the Board of Trustees to accept for maintenance responsibilities for future public roads in the woods of Forest Hills Phase 3. The Engineer's Office has received a maintenance surety and maintenance contract from the developer owner. The Board of County Commissioners has accepted the bond, which is good for the year. The Public Works Department has reviewed and staff supports the acceptance of these streets as public roads and recommends the Board support the Engineer's Office acceptance of Forest Edge Drive, 210 linear feet, which is equivalent to 0 0.039 miles, and Stags Run, 826.48 linear feet, which is equivalent to 0.15 miles. This will bring the total township maintained road miles to 123.45 miles, the most of any township in Hamilton County. There's a motion for your consideration. I move to support the Hamilton County Engineer's acceptance of Forest Edge Drive Phase 3 and Stacks Run, which lie in the woods of Forest Hills Subdivision as a township roadway. Second. Mrs. Lawson? Yes. Mrs. Stone? Yes. Mr. Garth? Yes. Thank you. We're getting bigger by the minute here. Yes, yes. Yeah. More and more feet. <laughs> Who were those guys that ran all the roads during COVID? Remember that? Was it all of them? Yeah, all the roads in Anderson Township. They uh, got fire more. and rescue. Chief Martin. Hi. Relax, I'm not asking to spend more money, <laughs> uh, <laughs> as I get grief from. Tonight, uh, really, it's a uh, privilege to announce that as of the first week of this month, the fire department has able, been able to complete a project we've been working on for probably in excess of two years. This is a project that we tried, went back to the drawing board when things didn't work. And the project itself is we are now have a bariatric unit or a unit that is capable of being a bariatric unit as a first responder. So what that means is our, our cots right now have a weight limit of approaching 700 pounds. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard to adjudicate when somebody approaches that weight. The new cot that we purchased uh, will hold up to 1,000 pounds. It includes a separate loading system. We had to redo the securing system inside the back of the medic unit. Mm. So basically what this is, we have some equipment off to the side. One of our four front, front running units is designated as, as a bariatric unit. When we get the call, we have several individuals that require this unit in the township. There's only one other unit in the entire greater Cincinnati area. Wow. Uh, we often had to call another unit from Fairfield. Um, we don't have to do that. We have one in-house now. And this unit, as it moves throughout its movement through our houses and into reserve, will continue to be utilized as you know, a bariatric unit. 
We are not going, right now the plans are not to have it go out of the township, although that is a possibility to assist neighboring jurisdictions, but there's several bridges that we have to cross before we come to that decision. So I did want to thank Chief Kasperzak, who runs our EMS division, Lieutenant Matt Jenke, and firefighters Tom Merrill, Mike Willenbrink, Corey Bauer, and Mike Montague. Like I said, this was a process we would go to a company that deals with ambulances, get it designed, mm -hmm. found out something didn't work, went back, and um, I'm very proud of the guys that worked on this and got this thing to the point that uh, it has met all the certifications and qualifications to qualify as a bariatric unit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Rick. Uh, yes, uh, the items we have for discussion tonight, uh, Ms. Parker is going to present. We do not have any items arising from executive sessions, so she will conclude the meeting here. Thank you. Uh, the first item is to renew our participation in what's called a group retrospective program. That's uh, for our workers' compensation premiums. It's through the Ohio Township Association, and we belong to it for many years. A part of the requirements of that program is that we designate as what's called a third-party administrator. That's the group that uh, processes and manages our claims as, as well as does the medical management. They offer a certain legal review. It, it's, um, it's a, they've been a good provider of those services. We've been with them under different names for also many years. Currently, their, their name is Sedgwick. It used to be Frank Gates of Isent. Uh, it has changed hands, but the, the service, has, service level has been good throughout all those changes. So unless the board has any questions, I would recommend that we once again participate in this program, which does require us to pay an, an annual fee to Sedgwick. Um, it is somewhat uh, largely offset by the savings we will see as part of our participation. Mm -hmm. So if the board is comfortable with moving forward with that, I would again, uh, as, in, as in the past, request approval to participate in this program again for this coming year. I move to authorize payment of $23,800 to Sedgwick for Anderson Township's participation in the 2023 Ohio Township Association's Group Retrospective Program. Second. Ms. Lawson? Yes. Ms. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerth? Yes. Thank you. The next item is uh, also a renewal of a program participation. This time it's for the township's employee medical insurance coverage. I'm very pleased to report that we have a 0% a premium increase. Uh, this is uh, our participation in a self-insuring pool of similarly situated uh, local governments and school districts in the state of Ohio. This has proven to be uh, a good financial model for purchasing uh, medical insurance benefits and um, I don't have the number off the top of my head, but we have been with them for a number of years. So I am recommending that we, again, uh, renew our participation in that program, and this would be for the planned year that starts uh, on August, 21st, August 1st of this year and runs through July 31st of next year. I move to authorize the Assistant Township Administrator for Human Resources to renew the, township employee, the Township's Employee Medical Insurance Plan through the Center for Local Government Benefits Pool as presented. Second. Mrs. Lawson? Yes. Mrs. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerth? Yes. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Suzanne. That's all we have. All right. Anything else? Seeing, hearing none, I will move to adjourn. Second. Washington? Yes. 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 Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. What? Short and sweet. Short and sweet. <laughs> 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 it's nice. I'm going to be going to the meeting in July. Yeah. Better late than never. Hi. <laughs> Yeah.
you need, Molly, you need me to sign anything? Yeah. Oh, good. I'm on. Same. Have a good weekend. Have a good four days. What do you get off the